this stuff. My uncle had tattoos, and I always used to look at his arm, and I wanted a tattoo. And in Coney Island, I seen a sign, tattooing. So I went in and I got a tattoo. It was a skull and crossbones, because I believe in another lifetime, I was a pirate. And I got my skull and crossbones, and looking around the walls, while he was doing this tattoo, which only took two minutes, and I paid two dollars and fifty cents for it. Gave him a fifty cent tip. I seen this beautiful rattlesnake on the wall. So I, I, I got my tattoo and I went and washed it in two hours in the bathroom in Coney Island. And I came back to get the snake two hours later. And I gave the man, his name was Max Peltz. I gave him five dollars. And I'm expecting change. I figured all the tattoos were $2.50. But he said, that's right, $5. And I watched this man, a big, huge man. He used to be a prize fighter. And he stands outside this little shop in Coney Island in the summer, the breeze blowing, he combs his hair. And I thought, boy, that's a nice way to spend your life, you know? And I asked him if he'd teach me, and he sold me some equipment, showed me how it worked. And I never looked back. I was doing it 50, 50 Retired last year at the end of fifth. <clears throat> on the wall, they have designs drawn on all the tattoo walls. And you see something that catches your fancy or reminds you of your inner thoughts, and, and that's what you get. In your, your tattoos reflect who you are, and they're all crazy. Everybody is. But the guy that gets the tattoo, you, you can see he, he wanted an angel. What You can tell what he's thinking. And <coughs> there's so many, <coughs> so many stories, and each person is an individual. And each person is unique, and they, they tell me a little bit about themselves while I'm tattooing them. I talk to them, where you're from, and, and everybody has a story. And they're all interesting. There are some that stand out in your mind, but not really, there's just so many of them. It's endless, the changes. And it's changed so much that after 50 years, I said, you know, I don't want to play anymore. It ain't the same game as when I started. So I sold my businesses to the guys that have been with me for the longest. Two guys were with me 40 years. That's a long time. And we're still friends, you know, working side by side for 40 years. And, and the, the breed of people that are getting tattooed, going back to the changes, it was a much rougher person that got tattooed, the drunken sailor, the seaman, the, the roofer, the construction man, the tough guy. And, and then the, the pretty little women are getting tattooed. And the school teachers are getting tattooed. And, and the, the, the artistry that they're getting tattooed on, it's just sensational. Uh, I met him when he first, uh, they shut down tattooing in, in New York. The mayor's son or nephew or something had gotten tattooed and they shut down all the tattooing in New York and he came to Philly. And when I first saw him and another guy named Dracula who had his face tattooed, I was like, oh my God, I had never seen anything like that in my life. Although my mother had tattoos, uh, she was 93 when she passed away and she had seven tattoos on her and they were done professionally by hand. And I never could understand why she never wore sleeveless tops in the summer and stuff like that. So one time I had to go to the bathroom really bad and I run in and I see my mother's tattoos. And I was like, wow. But I was never that enthused about tattoos. And after a while, my mother did regret getting them. Uh, but if she was around tattooed people, she was flashing away.